apologize for the video quality on that previous segment. Uh, my battery's going dead, so I will just go ahead and start soldering stuff on here. We need our power lead. I worked a little bit ahead here um, with the power distribution board. What I've done is put the battery lead on, and um, there's two backs on here. One is fixed at 12 volts, and the other one is adjustable by this screw. And I'm going to use this, uh, I'm going to adjust it to 5 volts to power the receiver, which will in turn then power the naze board. Once you stack this, uh, the top frame plate is going to be right here. Uh, you want to make sure that nothing is touching the carbon fiber. It's okay if it's close as long as you put some insulation over it. And taking the signal wire off taking it out of the housing and so these will plug in to go to the receiver so we got plus and minus like that and I'll probably put a little piece of tape over that just to make sure that we don't have any contact with the frame for safety and then secondly there's um, in addition to putting the ZTW Spider ESC's onto this board um, by the way, I forgot to mention earlier, these are 600 hertz. A standard Simon K ESCs are about 400 hertz. Simon K at 600 hertz, I should be able to bump the loop time on the naze. Uh, suffice to say, the lower your loop time, the faster the naze board processes um, everything and sends signals out to the ESCs. And fast is good because your quad can react to uh, stay much more locked in and stable. And then moving on to the other parts I'm putting onto this power distribution board, um, I'm going to put one rail is positive, the other rail is negative, ground, and I'm going to put two more header pins on each side. Um, one is going to go to the naze board for voltage monitoring, and the other one is going to go to uh, Nick's high-tech receiver which has telemetry monitoring of the voltage. First put the ESC's on because that'll take a lot of heat and then we'll put the more delicate components on. Okay here I'm taking a quick check um, these are the screw holes for the arm clamps and where the arm tubes, this is where you're going to route to the motor. The power distribution board is finished. I got four ESCs, the power source for the battery. I've got a tap to the adjustable back, plus and minus. A tap for the 12 volt back, plus and minus. And then two extra taps to the raw power uh, for the naze board and for telemetry receiver. Okay, so now I got this nifty little power distribution board done. And when you do that adjustment, by the way, on the screw, make sure you use um, something above, like two volts above what you want, because these are not step up backs. They're just a step down only. Um, so if you put, for example, if you're gonna try to adjust this for 12 volts, don't put a 3S battery on there, put a 4S battery. Um, because the 3S, if you put it at 12 volts, you're, if you keep turning it up, you don't go any higher than the cell input. So you don't really know where you're at. Um, so that's, that's why you want to do that. But I'm going to adjust it to 5 volts, so I can put a 3S battery on there. It'll be just fine. Okay, so the next thing to do is to solder on the pins to the naze board. The cool thing about the mullet is it comes with both right angle 
pens and straight pens. And we're going to use the right angle pens because um, we're in a tight spot. Okay, now that we got the soldering done, that's, uh, in my opinion, it's most time consuming and tedious, especially planning out the power distribution board. So the next thing is to start building this up, but uh, the way we'll do this is attach the, the knees um, to the quad, and then we'll attach all the wires before we cover up the knees. So what we're going to do here is we want access to that USB port. And I like to, to access it, this is the front of the quad, I like to access it to the right of the quad, it's the most natural, if you're right handed especially. So we just rotate the board uh, counterclockwise 90 degrees and I'll show you how to compensate for that in clean flight later. Okay, we got the nays in and we got a bunch of stuff to hook up and uh, don't want to forget the receiver at this point um, I like to put the receiver in the front so that the antennas come out this top big hole here so that keeps it uh, actually that's the back the front like this um, and that gets the antennas way up off the carbon fiber and usually you have your video, video transmitter in the back, so it keeps the two quite a ways away from each other. They're on different frequencies, but when you put stuff that are screaming right next to each other, it doesn't matter if they're in the same frequency family, sometimes you get some bad things happening. Um, and on the nays, the motor numbering for quad is one, two, three, four. So you'll want to have some method to uh, remember which one of these ESCs is 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Now, on the nays, it's super important that you get all the grounds on the grounds. Um, if, if you reverse polarity, for example, the voltage end monitoring, you'll instantly fry your nays board So, because there's no protection. So you want to make sure all the grounds on these pins are on the outside edge of the board. The buzzer um, uh, made these holes perfect for the buzzer, so it's going to sit right in there on the top. I believe I'm ready for the receiver. Now, normally I'd put a really big piece of foam tape there, but this is a temporary receiver for Nick. Um, and I want to show the S-Bus configuration with an orange receiver, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, it's a single signal wire, just like CPPM but you need this signal inverter cable. It's, I think it's called the ZXY Hobby King. Um, that's where I got mine. And there is a there is a direction, even though it's not marked, this side that's closest to the circuit goes to the receiver. So to start with, I, I put it on channel one. So on this receiver, the bind and S bus port are on the same pins, um, but we have to get power to the receiver just to start with, and then um, we'll put this in on the S-Bus after we bind. doesn't matter, I can plug this into, okay, here's something very interesting about this receiver is, unlike others, the ground is in the middle. These are horizontal pins rather than vertical, obviously. Go to channel two the output to the nays and I need input from our back. This is 5 volts right here. So this is power in the ground in the center. So we got 5 volts coming off the back into the receiver 
and then I have the SBUS signal inverter cable. And normally, if it were a CPM receiver, you just go straight in on the nays at pin 1. But for serial receivers, including SBUS, you go on to pin 4. So I pulled out the signal wire out of the harness. And I'm just going to put it right in pin 4, which is directly below ground on the receiver harness. So hopefully you can see that, pin 4. And then this goes right above it at ground and power. Make sure you got that in the right direction. Insta fry your board if you don't. Before I bolt this down, I'm going to go ahead and power it up and see if I get a boot up sequence on the nays. Bango, we got the lights. Beautiful. Beautiful. So there we go, Opto ESCs. Power from 5 volts on the power distribution board to the receiver, from the receiver to the nays. I'm going to go ahead and screw down the power distribution board. Alright, so I'm going to bind to my spectrum. Okay, we're bound. Now I'm going to, this is the SBUS output. It's going to go into the where the bind plug was. That's where orange receiver outputs the SBUS composite signal. Okay, so I'm going to check that receiver has a good light real quick. Yep, the light. Okay guys. We got a completed bottom frame plate with pretty much the guts of a mini mamba.